Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am once again working on my Viking Link mashup. I have made so far the sword, the axe, and I thought why not finish off the peripherals by making the shield, which if you've been watching my channel for any length of time have probably figured out I'm obsessed with shields. Um, the room behind me has got quite a heavy stack of them, and I thought, why not pile one more on there for good measure? I went into my iPad and digitally drew up a reference image for myself to go off of. I pulled from the Hyrule shield and a Viking shape, mixed in some runes, swapped out some icons, and this is what I came up with. I realize that it is probably accurate to neither, so if you are looking for a 100% Zelda authentic or a 100% Viking era, this ain't the build for you. I'm probably going to make some of you purists mad because I'm just cramming them all together and messing everything up for you, but it's cosplay and it's a mashup and it's for fun and... I really don't care. So I'm going to make this shield out of foam and I was gifted something, a kind of like prototype thing that I'm going to use in this build, which I'm pretty excited about and I don't want to get too much into detail. So I'm going to leave that for the, uh, the, the reveal. So let's get to building our Viking Link shield for the full cosplay build. Let's get to building! Let me go ahead and warn you, this video will be a little bit longer than normal. There's a lot to have to get through. I start by building the base for the wood center and working my way out. My pattern has to be taped together before tracing because it wouldn't fit on a regular piece of copy paper. Because I have a nice big roll of 6mm what the foam, I can do it all in one cut and I use that specific foam because it's a lot more rigid than the normal EVA. After doing two circles, I went ahead and added the third to make it super rigid so the wood portion is 18 millimeters thick fully assembled with the rune borders added on to it it's roughly 27 inches across <laughs> To add my wood grain texture to the shield and simulate a butted wooden plank, I am going to cut it into strips. I split it into six relatively even strips across the diameter and then cut them. Once I cut them out, I start carving in the wood grain texture using a stone bit on my rotary tool. Normally I don't draw the pattern on, I just kind of wing it as I go, but I thought I would show you just in case you needed that extra little guide, you can draw it ahead of time, plan your pattern out there. I doubled up the video in spots to try and keep this from being like 30 minutes long and taking like half a day uploading with my slow internet so please forgive the picture in picture. In the corner video I'm just gluing the strips onto the full circle. I repeated the wood grain stuff on the third circle to detail the back side of the shield. I made a quick shield boss pattern using a bowl from the kitchen and traced it onto some 6mm foam. You'll notice this is lighter than the stuff I just used. It's SKS HD foam which is not as dense as the what the foam but the same thickness as the other. It will allow me to bend the foam a little easier into shape. I heat form the pieces over a round object and then I put contact cement on the edges to now tack them together. The boss rim attaches to the foam bowl I just made. I sand the edges on the inside after assembled. My first deviation from the image I drew up for this build, I decided to add a hammer texture to my boss. I thought it would give an extra little cool detail. I used a round stone bit on my rotary tool and pocked the surface with these little divots all over. This not only adds a cool texture, it also hides my seam lines.
The handle for the Viking shields were pretty simple, usually just a wooden or metal dowel on the inside of the boss. I'm going to heat up the ends of this one inch PVC pipe and then squish them flat with my clamp. Then I'm going to cut a small wedge into the back side of my shield just through one layer to then super glue the handle into place. Make sure you rotate your PVC while heating it up. You want to do it gradually. You don't want to burn it because it lets out a nasty fume that you definitely shouldn't be breathing in. You'll also notice that I went ahead and cut out a hole for the boss in the shield base to sit in. For the glue up of my boss, I started by gluing the PVC into the slot I cut in the EVA. I traced out the front and the back of the shield with the boss and the trim so that I could go ahead and add the contact cement to apply to all the parts. The extra boss trim will add a decorative rim on the back side as well as further lock in that handle into place. Then I flip it over and just put the boss on the other side. My design has this bulky metal band around the outside of it with like segments on it to put my viking runes in. This will act as a housing for the LED lighting kit that I am going to be using so I will have a front and a back border with a strip to go on the inside and outside of the circle circumference. These portions would have taken up much more foam so I made them into segments and then made an overlay in the design so that the four points would be covered. The awesome thing about designing your own builds is you can plan out your seam lines ahead of time and think of overlays that you can make to hide them. Let's glue this up four to a circle and keep this build moving. To connect my two bands, I am running a strip on the inside and the outside of the circle. After testing out my lights and diffusion plans, I determined the optimal distance for my thickness. My strip is one and a quarter inch wide. That's about 32 millimeters for you metric using friends out there. I cut a long length of each of these little strips and then glued up the face of the circle and the edges of my strips in that same six millimeter what the foam to stick it down. Thank <laughs> you. To join the two halves together, I'm going to use the wet contact cement application. Both parts are still wet when I start to put them together. This will allow me just a little bit of free time to position it where I need to. The overlays act as kind of a catch so that I don't go too far off of it. You could try to space it in the middle and be less bulky on the front and kind of balance it, but after test footing a little bit, I kind of like the way it looked. It had a chunky feel to it. Things are starting to really take shape. It's going to be awesome. Boom!
Now I could have gone on my laser cutter here and cut out these runes before I did the glue up, but I thought it would be just as easy to do it by hand and make it a little less perfect, hopefully adding some character to the front. I did cut up the same runes with my laser cutter to put on the back side just as a quick little decorative touch and I, I kind of like the front side better. It was easier to adapt it to the area that I wanted to fit it in and take up more area so that more light would come through. Just lock your wrist and try to pull through as clean as possible. You can always go on the inside and sand it with a bit later if you need to clean up some areas. Now here is the magical bit. A company in Canada reached out to my channel a while back and asked if I'd be interested in trying out a prototype they were working on. These kits are not ready for mass production yet, but they were kind enough to let me try one out. As more info is available, I'll add it to the description of this video. The basic idea of the product is to take the complication and hesitation out of LED tech in fashion or the cosplay maker community and make it more accessible. These strips came pre-soldered and had connectors already attached to them. The strings then clip onto a board that I can connect through Bluetooth to my phone. More on that in a minute. In the corner shot, once the strips are glued in, I then use some packing foam from like a furniture that I bought a while back and use that as a diffuser for the light so you don't see the individual bulbs. To diffuse the LEDs a little more, I took a thin sheet of acrylic and sanded one side of it, then I glued that to the underside of the rune border. This will also act as a way for me to glue on the parts of the rune that have like the inside parts. To keep the spacing on those parts with the inside bits a little you know, closer to even, I went ahead and put the cutouts back in while I was gluing and just made sure to glue only the parts that would stay. Also I needed to make sure and leave enough gap between the top and the bottom so that the sides could glue on. The last part of the build is adding all these little detail parts. The ridges I added to my design between each rune, the vac nut on the boss instead of the triforce, and the little rivets on certain areas. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the symbol parts on the wooden portion off until I paint them so I don't have to mask them all off later. two coats of plasti dip to seal everything. Then I lightly misted the metal bits with some silver. The front wood got a little bit of blue spray paint and the back got some brown. I regret this decision. I did a test piece and thought, oh, this will be easy to take off the nail polish remover. I didn't take into account the nooks and the crannies and the fact that I left the Plasti Dip to sit overnight, then another few hours to let the spray paint dry. Along with the cotton swabs, I had to bust out some clay carving tools to get into the corners. Altogether, it took me almost three hours to remove this stuff from the rooms. Should have just masked it off. Would have saved a lot of time and a lot less stress on my fingers.
With all my symbols painted up, I can now put them onto the shield before weathering. Luckily, I had lots of reference points on the shield like the runes, the boss, and the planks to help line up it to get it relatively close to being symmetrical. I just super glued them onto each other and move on to some detail painting. For the rest of the paint job, I use some Platifex acrylic paint and for the metallics I use some silver and gold rub and buff. I dirtied up all the recesses with some wetted down brown and black acrylic and wiped off the high points with a paper towel. I also put a little bit in the rooms with a little bit of that yellow dirtied up to make it look kind of aged. In my corner shot, I lightly hit the faux metal edges with some silver rub and buff to make it look like it was worn and scratched off. To cover up my PVC handle, I added little strips of faux leather. This makes it feel a lot nicer and a lot better looking when it's hiding that plasti dip that's already starting to peel off. You may also notice that my cord is dangling out. I didn't want to permanently lock that chip inside the build or try and figure out how to do a little removable panel, so I came up with another idea for a build to disguise the board, the wire, and the battery pack and make it go with the theme, um, but that's going to be another build. That's a secret. Tell you later. To dirty up the faux leather, I hit it with some shoe polish and then scuffed most of it off. When you add lights to a project, it just takes it to that next level. And while I have added some lights here and there to projects, I am not proficient at wiring at all. I can do basic installation and I can kind of solder a little bit, but for the most part, I just like pull parts that already exist and put them on. I definitely don't know much about the coding aspect. The magic of this is the board connects to a phone app. And in just a few minutes, I was able to make six separate lighting animations with the drag and drop software they have. You can do this on the fly and send it to the chip via your phone. Thanks to Shannon Hoover for reaching out to me with this enlightened kit. Can't wait to see this come to the market and see the awesome things that people create with this no fuss plug and play wizardry magicalness. I think my favorite is what I call the blue power up here in this little clip. And we are finished here is the end result i am super pumped with the way this thing is turning out this is going to make this cosplay even more epic i did enjoy the liberty of being able to change things on the fly because it's my own design um, i think that these little rivets and these ridges add to the detail of it and give it some more heft it is super big but at the same time it's light because it is foam uh, if this thing was made out of wood and metal, 15, 20 pounds, easy. Um, I didn't have anything drawn for the back, and I just made that up on the fly. I think that looks pretty cool, too. But you'll notice that I did not um, turn the lights on because I, I might have been playing with the, the lights and the thing for too long and wore my battery out before I recorded. Yeah. Um, I do want to point out, if I did this again, or if you attempt to do this, tape off the stupid acrylic and don't try and remove it with fingernail polish remover. I was 
over here on the table for like three hours last night trying to scrape that off with a Q-tip. Uh, actually got a bruise on my pointer finger from pushing on it repeatedly. Uh, so take the time, mask your stuff off, and don't give yourself more of a headache. But yeah, maybe you'll try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to mash up things that don't belong and may not even be historically accurate but still look super cool in the process. Yeah, that may be the channel's motto. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them, much props. Um, I mean, the, the purpose of this is to hit you, and, and you know it's coming. I don't want to have to do it, but you know you're gonna get hit when I make something and it's like, it's just there, so. Buckle down and take it. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to see more awesome builds like this, please consider joining these people listed here with me over on Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.